Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. In this episode I've got a few um, exciting new things to talk about. The first one is something I was complaining about in the last episode. So in the last one I was complaining about these sort of stations like this one where the um, the train, the, the all the chests get unloaded basically from bottom up because of the way the um, basically because anything that gets put on by the bottom ones blocks and blocks the stuff being put on by the top ones until the bottom ones have run out so you get this sort of effect where everything is concentrated in the top couple of chests now for something like this one that isn't being used very quickly that doesn't really matter because these are quite capable of keeping the belt full or at least keeping it as full as it needs to be given what given the amount of load there is on the other side the problem arises when you have something like um, well you can see it a little bit with the wood here except it's being fixed by this so yeah, are there any that are actually having the problem? Maybe over here? Yeah, here we go. So like this one, this, this crushed stone one, it's only, it's only these two chests that are being unloaded. And I think it's these two because the first three are unloading the um, onto the near side of the belt and the top three are unloading onto the far side of the belt. So the bottom one, so these ones get used up first, then this one, then this one, then this one. And that means, so as you'll see when this loads back up again, yeah, with the, these ones are unloading onto the far side of the belt and these ones are unloading onto the near side. So you end up eventually with just one of the chests unloading and it can't, and, and like here as well, this isn't a full belt, it can't keep up with it. So the uh, the fix for that is to put in some extra circuitry like that, like I've got here that does some fairly clever stuff. So what? I, so I'm going to talk about this a bit first. This is, as you can see, is a copper station and there's, there's um, supply in all of them. So what I've done here is I've got the standard red cable running all the way down here which measures how much copper there is in total in all of them and I've been using that on all of these stations to measure it and pass it up to the station here um, so it knows whether to request or not and this one is currently requesting. So we've got the total number of copper being held on this thing which in this case is 15,000. I'm then using this combinator here to divide to divide it by 13. Now that was originally it was the number of um, chests I had which is 12 but then I thought actually I want to make sure everything's always running so I bumped that up one extra to 13. So we've got we've got 19,000 going in and 1.5,000 with a tick mark coming out. Then each of these um, and then there's another red cable that's completely separate from the first one that runs up the other side of the um, as you can see by highlighting when I mouse over it, that runs up is connected to all of the inserters, and that's carrying the ticks, the 2.2 thousand ticks. And there's also, if you look closely, we've got green cables going from each chest to the inserter it's connected, that's running from it, and those, those are all completely separate. So there's one going between each chest and its inserter, so that carries the information about what's in the um, what's in that specific chest the inserter and then the inserter will then run if the amount of copper in its chest is greater than the, than the number of ticks being passed up so in this case yeah here we go so you can see this one the, the one at the bottom here sometimes isn't running so if it's got less than the average then it won't run but as soon as it's got more than the average or slightly less than the average more than slightly less than the average that makes sense honest then it will run so this means we're getting an, an even unloading from all of the chests and even with oops, even with the um, the fact that we're pulling two purple belts out of this it's still managing to almost keep it full in fact yeah there's a gap trundling up there but as long as there's as long as we're not using absolutely a hundred percent of the um, the copper coming off here it is capable of keeping it full at least in theory now this isn't working quite perfect. This is not working quite perfectly. I think I need to have some sort of some of these. I need. I think I need to have these side balancers down here as well, or possibly up. Yeah. To. So it's in theory it's working. Well, in theory it's working. In practice, it's not quite right yet. So I'm, I'm going to need to do a little bit of tweaking to get this working properly. I think. Because of the. Um, Actually, if I put another balancer on this one, then I think it probably will work. Let's try. Let's try that. I know I shouldn't really sort of talk about what I'm doing um, in the explanatory. Shouldn't really do stuff in the explanatory episodes. The whole point is you, you, me telling you about what I've done in the past. But when it's a little fix like that, I think it's worthwhile. There we go. That's now that's now balanced it much better. So we're getting the two solid belts coming out, and it's keeping it much more balanced between these. There is much more balance. It's not perfectly balanced. There's 4.7 thousand in that one and 3 thousand in all the rest of them. Now I think that might be because of the... 
Yeah, that's probably because I'm dividing by 13 instead of by 12. <sighs> let's let's try take, turn, changing that to a 12 and see what happens. Debug, debug, debug. So now it's the average is 3.1, so all of these have stopped. So we're going to pull 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 the excess out of these top chests first. Then we'll see what happens. Right, after that brief pause, I think we've now got to the point where it seems to be working. Again, there's... Because I'm pulling... To, because of this particular one, I'm pulling two or, uh, purple belts out of. There's a little bit of extra strain on it. So this is a particularly hard one to, to test with. Um, but actually, this does seem to be coping. I'm quite impressed. I was... Um, I wasn't sure it was going to. But there's, it looks like there's enough back... Just about enough back pressure on it. That when you get this gap here, it's, it's able to close up before it actually um, gets through onto the other side. I have a, th a cunning plan. If I upgrade all of this to about here to green belts, then I think that'll put in a little bit of extra speed and will help it eat up any, any potential gaps that try to appear. So that does now seem to be working. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. And it's also quite a lot simpler than the um, than the versions of this I saw on, online. I'm only literally only using one arithmetic combinator and a huge number of wires in order to get it working. Now, I did have to also add in this arithmetic combinator here. And all that's doing is multiplying the, the number of copper plates on the input by one and outputting it. And that's to split it off because this has got minus 30 on it. Uh, minus 30,000 on it and that was completely throwing out all of my calculations down here um, so I could possibly put in another one down here to have added an appropriate amount on but I decided it was easier to put this in here now the downside of that is it meant there was no then easy way to mouse over this and find out how much supply I had so I've added in another um, another pylon up here to give me a to give me a readout of what's going on at that end of the, the, um, the system so that seems to be working I'm quite pleased with that the next thing was something I think I also talked about a little bit, and that was up here the, the full-size crystals for the um, version six, seven, and eight of the um, of the modules had stopped because I'd run out of the the uh, large biters. That's these ones here. Now the reason that had happened, I'm going to need to put, <laughs> I need to put some more of these um, machines in by the looks of it. So the reason that had happened is because these these um, big biters have managed to basically breed themselves out of existence. So what we had before was over here, let me make sure I'm talking about the right ones, yes, over here we had the medium biters and they produce more eggs and queens and things per time they run than they use up time when they're, um, basically each time these, each time this, the whole system runs it produces more biters than it uses up. So that was working nicely. These ones, each time it ran it was producing fewer biters than it was using up. And so it was. It wasn't. It wasn't um, sustainable. So in order to get that working, I needed an extra supply of these um, corrosive puffer eggs because that's what you, you can you turn those plus a load of other ingredients into the large biter eggs, which can then be passed down here and bread and uh, hatch and so on. Unfortunately, um, that was a slightly tr that was a rather tricky process. So what was required over here? The original um, system. I'm gonna shut that up because that farting noise is very distracting right over here what I had before was the um, the floater puffers and that was working quite happily it was producing lots and lots of the floaty puffers that was fine they're breeding and producing all the acid gas and so on and also producing some eggs somewhere I forget exactly where the eggs were being produced but they were and that was all fine and hunky-dory where was, was it this one yes here yeah here, here the, the eggs are being produced like that one there and then you hatch the eggs out, and some of them turn out to be, in fact, most of them turn out to be floater puffers, and a few of them turn out to be these other ones, the uh, the green ones, the blue ones, the orange ones, and so, and so on. And I needed lots and lots of the green ones, but they were only being produced at a rate of, at a rate of not very many, should we say. I think it was about half a percent, and that wasn't enough to keep the other systems going, especially now that this is fully backed up and not really, not really necessary. I need to start feeding these uh, excess puffers around to the... Um, the meat processing plants in fact so what I did was the same sort of thing but with green puffer a uh, corrosive puffer breeding so these are we're pulling in a couple of puffers then uh, then they combine them with the nutrient pulp and some fruit 
and they and they spit out green puffer eggs, mostly green puffer eggs. There's a few other things that come out as well, but but mostly it's the green puffer eggs, and that's and that's what I wanted. So they're being sorted out here. Anything weird and unusual is being then passed up here because this these also produce half a percent of other things as well. So those are being fed round here and onto this belt where they're dealt with by the previous systems I've set up. The tricky part of this, I mean, that that was all fairly straightforward to set up. It was just a copy of the um, the previous system moved, moved over and running in exactly the same way. The problem I had was in order to get fruit, which is what, but it turns out puffers are quite picky eaters. So you've got the um, the normal floater puffers require, I think these are nuts, and those come from one particular type of plant. It's uh, these ones. It's uh, what's it called? Zombie something or other. And that can be processed into nuts, easy, nice and easy. Um, but the the green ones require fruit, and that comes from rather specific types of um, uh, plant. Those can be got from mushratato, quil quilnoa, and zello squash. <laughs> and and these are a pain to get because in order to get these, you need to get the seeds for them. Um, and about the only place you can get the seeds from is originally is by processing these desert the, the appropriate types of gardens. Uh, I think these these ones come from the swamp gardens. The uh, uh, zello squash come from desert gardens and so on. So I had to go out into the world again looking for these bloody gardens. And and it's as as you saw from here, there's only a 20% chance of actually producing the seeds you want or a 10% chance of some of the other ones. So I had to get rather a lot of those gardens and, that, and that's why I've done all this exploring around up here. I was just running around trying to cover terrain, grabbing up as many of the little gardens that grow out here as I could and then coming down and slamming them into the, um, into the seed extractors. Eventually, after processing about 20 of them, I think, which it felt like that, it might, it might only have been 15, eventually I managed to get the, um, the, the seeds for the mushroom tartos and then I've started growing them here. Um, there seems to be a bit of a backlog here, unfortunately. So yeah, the processing of these produces the alien bacteria as well, which I was using, which I'm using to make the meat as well down here. Um, oh, I see why that's backed up. Right, okay. So I'm going to need to go in here and make sure it prioritizes. Oh, it is prioritizing from that side. It's just not using them enough to keep a steady flow flow of the uh, of the fruit through. Right. So I'm going to need to go in and just basically buffer these somewhere because there's so many of them. I think I'm just going to do the standard thing where you whack a warehouse in and have six um, unloaders on each side of it or something. Anyway, that's that's quite annoying. But but it um, yeah, but the seeds get passed through around here and you, you grow up the stuff and yeah, it's it's it's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, however, it does seem that despite my complaints there of not having enough of stuff. I, have, I do have now an enormous number of these corrosive puffer eggs, so the system is actually working. I've got more of these things than I know what to do with. I'm completely backed up on these crystals, so I think I need to put in another couple of these machines to do the um, the processing of the things, of the crystals. And um, yeah, we can have loads of these flooding through. They then get brought up here by train, as, as you know. Um, they get dropped off here. Now my trains have all run out of fuel because these ones are a bit crap and not being fueled automatically. I uh, should probably do something about that, and I think I will in a moment. Uh, but they're being brought up here and then fed round and turned into the um, into the various types in, into the uh, various types of, of modules. Speaking of modules, I've been going around shoving a lot of production modules in things. So as you as you may remember from the last episode, I was having massive shortages of silicon um, for various other reasons, which I've I've sort of fixed to an extent. But I've now got a decent supply of it coming in here, as you can see. That's being brought up and turned into silicon wafers here. Now all the way along here I've got in massive quantities of these um, tier 8 modules and that means that each time it runs, each time it pulls in the inputs it's producing about two and a half times the amount of output it, that it normally would. So I've cut down the amount of silicon I need on the inputs by about two and a half, by about a factor of, well if it, in that case it means I'm going to be needing um, a 40% of what I did before which is a massive improvement. I think I can also put productivity modules in these as well, which will then take it down to, I suppose, 40% of 40%, which is even better. So I've then, as well, I've also come in along and put, well, I've only put tier 4s in. Oh, and I've some tier 8s as well. I've, it's a bit, I haven't got enough, enough modules to fill all of these up with the best ones. So I've put the tier 8s in the machines that seem to be doing most of the work. Um, and that's working quite nicely. That's, um, 
it's spitting out massive quantities of the uh, of the transistors now. And again, with the re reduced inputs, and that also is, is me meaning a massive saving on plastic and on tin and copper as well, which admittedly is less of a problem, but it's still have, it's good to have the savings in there. I've done the same here for the um, for the integrated circuits, although here again I've I've not had enough of the tier eights to be able to do to be able to put them in all of them because the tier eights required the, the advanced crystals, which I didn't just didn't have enough of. But still, having these in is still is still a fairly major improvement, just not quite as much so. I think I've also gone along. Yeah, red circuits were also a problem, so I've gone and put in a load of the um, them in here as well. So basically, shoving in all of these productivity modules massively reduces the amount of input product I need. Uh, input product, input input resources I need in order to get the uh, the outputs I, I'm uh, I'm trying to get. It's still well, there's still a bit of a shortage of these coming in. The transistors are still a bit under underrepresented, but I'm not sure how I can really improve that. I suppose I could run another. I could. No, I could, and th those are coming in on green belts as well. So there's not a lot I can do about that, short of having another rank of these things and just building the whole thing all over again. But that's that's probably going a bit far. My medium-term plan is also to come along and put the productivity modules in all of these things as well. All, um, as you can see, that's working quite well. It's producing the uh, modules faster than I know what to do with them. Uh, fast the producing the science packs faster than the belts are capable of taking them through. So that's another area that clearly needs to be sped up. Let's do that. Um, because at the moment I'm doing this faster than light theory research um, which uses two million uh, research packs but only the yellow ones. So um, there's a huge demand on the yellow ones. Um, although there's a huge supply of them as well, so it seems to be okay. And it's chugging away very, very slowly, as you can see up here. So moving on from the, moving on to the next topic, I've also got over here. I'm building up a supply of. Well, there's no power for these. That's interesting. I built. I've doubled the amount of research I can do. So I need to go up there and link it in properly, so that all of the labs are getting the research packs in and uh, and can run at full speed. I do want to go along and put. Um, red modules, uh, productivity modules in all of the labs as well. Uh, that's unfortunately I think is a bit of a bigger job. Why are these not being built? Unfortunately I've got so many labs that to produce productivity modules for them all is going to be an absolutely enormous job. But let's get these linked up anyway. Oops. <laughs> oh well, it'll sort itself out. Now I'm not carrying remotely enough belts to finish this off, so I'm going to copy and paste it all the way down here and let the bots worry about it. That's what they're for, right? Okie dokie, so as you can see the um, the science packs are flowing merrily through the uh, research system, loading everything up. There's a lot of all, all of these are complaining about not having the uh, the, re the uh, modules they need in them, but that's not really a problem. Interestingly, they're loading up with modules that they don't need right now. It um, surprises me. I, th I thought that the um, I thought that the labs only picked up modules that they actually needed at the time. I've got enough to finish. No, I haven't. Okay, come along bots, hurry up. One of the things I've noticed about using the bots is that they tend to... Um, you, t you tend to have to wait quite a while for them to actually go off from wherever they were building things before to go and get what you've asked them to build and then bring them over. But never mind, it'll, it'll, it, they'll be there fairly soon. In fact, while we're waiting, let's have a look at that copper thing where I put in the green, green belts. Yeah, that's now easily keeping those full, so that has worked quite nicely. It's yeah, it's interesting. They, um, I think because there's more demand for on the left side of the belt than on the right, it's unloading onto that. It's unloading onto the um, left hand side more quickly, and then going, oh, I've got less than average now. I can't do another handful. But it is keeping them all quite nice and balanced. Look at that, 1.6 thousand all the way down there. That's much better. What was the other thing I fixed? Can't remember, don't care. 
Okay, they're giving me more of them. I'll do this bit manually then. There we go. So now we see the yellows and the greens. That's an odd combination. The uh, the first science pack and the last science pack, but no matter. Being passed along here, and now the all these machines can get can get researching as well. So that's going to double the speed of my research. It's still two million minutes um, divided by how many of these I've got, multi divided by whatever speed the oh I don't know. Um, so it's going to take a while to run, but. Uh, I wonder how many. I wonder how many of these research labs, I've, science labs, I've got. Can I? F I think I can find out by looking in the power menu. Four hundred and sixteen. So two million divided by four hundred is twenty. Th is five thousand. So five thousand minutes. That's still a long time. <sighs> okay. Well, we'll just leave it running, I suppose, and then probably come back and put some more. Um, more of these, more another load of labs in when I've worked out whether I can actually support them or not. It does let's see. <laughs> yeah, the um, yellow science packs. They are actually being fed through quickly enough. That's not too bad. But it's still a bit of a um, the usual problem. I don't... Now, I don't want to go around and upgrade all of the stations to do the with the um, to do the to do this cleverer system I've done with the copper down in the on the bus because that's going to be an enormous job and it's quite fiddly to do. You have to go in and program lots of lots of individual lots of separate things individually. So I'm hoping I don't need to do that. But it, but it does mean that the odd one or two here and there that are having problems, I can certainly do it for. Okay. I think that's everything I've done recently. Um, for the next episode, I'm probably going to try and boost the research even further. I don't know. I could, I could, actually, I might just make a copy of the entire system of stations and put it somewhere else because this is getting a bit cluttered and having and feeding all of this down the same, just down one set of belts is is getting a bit going to get a bit tricky. I think. So yeah, I might copy the entire research thing and paste it in. I could put it over here perhaps, there's a nice open space there, or over here, and it, it doesn't really matter, I've got the, tr the trains will take all the stuff anywhere, wherever I need them to. So that's going to be relatively straightforward. Um, modules need a bit of TLC, I need to go out and fuel those trains back up again so that they carry on working properly. What are you doing? That's weird. I need to check out what's going on here. Some sort of funny business. Oh, this train's trying to pick up copper from here instead of drop it here. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll sort that out. <laughs> okay, but beyond that, I mean, at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm really working on science and streamlining. So, the science, as I said, I can I can copy these, copy this entire thing and make another one of them. That'll work fine. And the streamlining is just a case of going around putting in um, productivity modules everywhere at this stage. And then after that, we'll see if there are problems with anything. So I'll, um, I'll talk some more about that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. This might have been a slightly longer episode than normal, but never mind. I think I was reasonably coherent. At least I hope I was. I hope I'll see you next time for some more, um, for some more rambling. Thank you for watching.